Today we're going to talk about worms. It is Wednesday of coronavirus time. I've been tying shad flies all day. I'm going to take a break. Let's talk about worms. We're going to go from what I was introduced to, just this basic San Juan, to some more modern materials and where I've settled now to the most effective worm fly I've ever fished. It's an awesome fly. We're going to learn about it. So, I started fly fishing a long time ago and the first worm out there was the San Juan. This little red doodad, that's a little bit long. They look like that. They're supposed to have burnt tips on the ends. Super, super simple fly to tie. However, it's just not my preference, not my favorite material. It can only do so much. So I started playing around with other worm materials, but I mainly still use this for years. Comes in a, a ball of vernier ultra chenille like this. Some of them are nice and they, they don't fall apart on you. After a couple of casts and fish, it's great for salmon, steelhead, largemouth, smallmouth, trout, rainbows, browns, whatever. That's pretty cool. So everyone knows how to tie one of these. If you don't, let's just knock one out of the way. All you need is, I'm going to do all these on a size 10 curved scud hook. I got my new scissors in the mail today. They're awesome. So we're just going to take some thread, 6 out red, wrap it down above the hook point. Take a piece of this, about an inch long. When I worked in Breckenridge, people would come in the store asking us for bubblegum pink San Juan worms. And we would basically just tie them to order. And we sold them for two bucks a pop. People would come in with wet wading boots on. They'd buy them and go back to the stream. So that's a San Juan worm. You just need a lighter and you slowly singe the tips. It's a fly that, if you're going to learn a first fly, it's going to be a San Juan. All right, that's good and all, right? How can we make that even better? Well, a lot of worms out there are not this small. There's all sorts of round worms and horsetail worms and bizarre things out there that you probably have never seen but the fish eat. So what if we took a larger hook, a size whatever, curved hook, and we're going to take the same thread, start our thread, go down to the hook point, Let's take a big piece of this, and we will just balance it in the middle. Tie a piece of it here. Pull that back, wrap all the way forward towards the hook eye. Bend it down, like that. Tie it off and knot it, and you've got a big San Juan worm. All right. It's the only way you can really change a San Juan worm after that fish catching fly has been around for decades. And we're going to take the tips so it doesn't come apart. Singe them just a little. How would you fish this? Well, that's a great dropper fly. I, I missed a huge scoop up of a largemouth on four mile run with Patrick a couple years ago. We saw one of these get slurped up by about a two pound largemouth, big fat hog, in about eight to ten inches of water at low tide. And I missed the scoop. I put it behind a shad jig and then just bounce it along the bottom. Shad jig, bounce it along the bottom. It's good fly in the tidal basin. Not the most practical in other places, but there you have a San Juan worm. Now let's start going to more synthetic materials before we get into the squirmies. You can do the son of the San Juan worm, which is one I learned from the Orvis blog and Tightline Productions. This is just the son of the San Juan worm. One rubber leg tied to a small curved shrimp hook. This is basically what keeps your undies and your socks up. Just one of those. Great dropper fly for warm water. I have not fished it in cold water, but awesome, awesome little fly. Then you've got this stuff. This stuff is pearl cord braid. I've got it in purple. I've got it in red. I've got it in yellow. Blue. Chartreuse, pink, orange, and more blue. This makes an awesome, awesome worm. There's some tricks, though, you need to learn to tie one of these. So let's tie one of these. We'll do a medium-sized one. So we're going to cut the diamond pearl cord. That's what it looks like up close. Makes great little bums on caddisflies. Let's take a number 10 hook, curved shrimp. 
Caddis Scud, Snow White Damsel Hook, start your thread. Again, we're going to divide the fly into a little about thirds. A couple wraps here. Pull this back. Wrap up to the eye of the hook. A couple wraps there. Super duper. Now, what if you want to go and burn this? It's made of plastic. So if you burn the tips on this to keep them from falling apart and get it on you, it's going to hurt. So what I do is I take a little bit of my solar res and I just paint the tips with a little bit of bone dry. Just like that. And then I'm going to hit it with my lamp. Doesn't change the integrity of the fly, just keeps it from falling apart. For a one or two seasons on steelheading, this was one of my go-to patterns for steelhead. Super simple, easy. And if I showed you all the colors of this, let me show you all my San Juan material colors. This is 25 years worth of San Juan materials I've collected. So I got my red. I got bubblegum pink. I got a fluorescent color. I've got this one that falls apart. I've got very thin red. I've got nice earthworm doo-doo brown. Got a nice cherry red. A white one to look like dead earthworms that flow in the water. So you got dead earthworms out here that drown. And the reason earthworms are up and out, it's not because they're drowning when it rains. It's easier for them to locomote across a wet surface than to go through wet ground. They can just move faster. And they die, they drown, they wash into the creeks and rivers, and they look dead. Here we go. I've got purple. I've got chartreuse. I've got another red one. I've got another pink one. I've got more brown. I've got tan also to look like dead ones. I've got some more thin burgundy. I got more pink. I got a piece of red. I got uh, fluorescent red. I've got an orange that I think also falls apart. This one I think falls apart. This is a really nice color of natural earthworm color. I just picked these up here and there. And there's a little olive one. Good for a little hydrocyche green snock rock caddis. I've got a super thin pink one. You know how old that is if it's got that orange logo. And this is actually a little bit thicker worm material. Reed Tackle. Fly tie material. I might just be regular chenille. So these are all of my worm colors. I really only tie these for steelhead. They're just collected in a bag. And then if I'm going steelhead fishing, I just grab this whole bag and pack it up and take it with me. So that's it for old school worms. Let's get into some more modern worms. So I brought you traditional San Juan. I brought you long San Juan. I brought you son of the San Juan. And I brought you this one. Now let's talk about spikies. Spikies is a, it's a plastic material you can get at Michael's Craft Store. Comes in blue. Comes in chartreuse. These are getting oddly stuck. I'm not trying to do that. Uh, I'm trying to throw them behind me. Purple. Red, which is awesome. And we're going to tie it in pink. So the cool thing about this, it is 10 yards about five dollars age six and up for you young tires and it stretches you don't even need to tie this on with thread because you can just half hitch it on no thread required so this is spikies plastic worm material super stretchy comes in a bunch of colors and we're going to make an adjustment now to the worms we are going to take some non-toxic soldering lead and we're going to wrap the shank. Why am I doing this? Well, with these materials, they can slide on the hook a little bit being that they are silicone. So I'm going to put this down. It took me about a year and a half of tying synthetic wormage to figure out to use that. Not only does it help the worm sink because these are mostly used as droppers, it is additionally going to help us tie the material in. I'm going to put a bunch of thread at the back of this to prevent this non-toxic wire from sliding down over the hook shank. We've got our worm material. We're going to again divide it into thirds. 
One third is in the butt. And about one third is the body. One third is the forward. These don't have great motion in the water, but they've got really good brightness and durability. And I'm going to do a couple wraps there, and then I'm going to knot it. Show you this fly up close. So that's what it looks like up close. You can see how when I wrap it with the thread, it goes into the grooves in the metal. And that just holds it better to the hook. Now it doesn't have natural point tips like a San Juan would. You can just, if you're really anal retentive, you maybe remember the anal retentive fisherman from SNL. I am not him. There you go. And if it's too long, it's synthetic, you can just cut it down. That's about as easy as a worm fly you're ever going to get. And it'll move in the water a little bit, but not like a natural worm. It's more of an attractor. I'll use this in Colorado behind a bacon fly. Now we're going to go into the squirmy materials. So I first learned about the squirmies. I don't know where. I'd seen the stuff in craft stores for years and just thought it was too easy. I'd bought my nephew a toy in Ohio that had little silicone plumage on top. And I said, man, that's too easy to tie a fly with that. So I never tied with it. And then I start seeing the stuff popping up on websites and blogs, squirmy worms. And I never really thought about actually using them until Brian Chow and I fished for snakeheads. He caught one, first client ever to catch a snakehead. And we went to the Orvis store afterwards and he pointed out the shaky worm. It's Orvis's version. He said, man, these things are great. You got to try them. I was like, no way. Not too far after that, there was a conversation on the itinerant angler forum about the same things and where to get them. And there wasn't a whole lot available back then that we knew about. So I initially bought this stuff. Spaghetti balls. Looks pretty cool, right? Look at all of that squirmy, stretchy material in one, one package. So you just break off a piece and tie it on. And that was sort of the original squirmy. Looks great. It's soft. It gets slurped up. It doesn't take up space in a fish's mouth when they slurp it up. So it's going to have a real feel to it. Problem is, it just doesn't last long. A couple of bites and this stuff, look at that. It already broke. It's not the most dense and it's not made for fishing so i played with this for a little bit got rid of it tried another brand this one and you can see it's just all falling apart over the years i gave this to my daughter you have to tie three strands of these onto one hook so it looked like a medusa three going out of each end for that to last three or four flies great for one fish that's about it then i went into michael's craft store and i found valhalla of warming materials. I went in there, this is about seven years ago, and I found these. Ghost puffer balls. Take a look at that. Not only is it silicone, but it's tapered from fat to thin. And I had to figure out how to tie flies with these. And I'm gonna tie one now. This is where they are at this moment as my most effective purple worm fly. If I've got kids as clients in the summer, I'm going to go out and have popper dropper with these. Not the Snow White Damsel, but these. This might be my most effective fly. You see, the Snow White Damsel is pretty damn effective. You drop this in front of a largemouth bass, and it is going to get eaten. So, I need two of these. And then I'm going to go over the different brands, makes, and models of similar material. I got these two. We're going to change up thread on this one. Clear thread. If we did red thread earlier on a fly, you can't see it here. Yeah, I can see it here. It's even more noticeable on this type of worm. We got our size 10 hook in there. Non-toxic wire from the hook point forward. Nice and tight wraps to keep it from falling off. Trim. You remember the step I took to keep this from falling off previously no okay I'll show you I'm gonna start my thread right back here I'm gonna make a big pile a big bump that will keep this worm from sliding down now I'm gonna take my first wormy piece lay it down about three quarters of the way about right here and I'm gently gonna pull down with that clear mono I'm gonna pull this back while I'm doing it Couple wraps here, go forward. 
right there. You've got brilliant end of a worm. We're gonna take this other piece, we're gonna do the same. Initially tying it down right behind that hook eye, and that's gonna keep it from sticking in odd directions. A few wraps here, I'm gonna go back up, drop my bobbin. I've got this nub sticking out from the second piece. Cut that, it's a little purple nub. Now I've got this awesome looking worm. And what I'm gonna do is just pull down and I'm gonna half hitch over the worm and just down to any one of those grooves in the rubber. If I do it in the middle, it doesn't matter. Now I've played with solar res, coating these to make them last longer. Problem is, in the heat, they fall apart. These things will melt in your car, they will melt in your fly box, they will melt anywhere, which is why I now tie them and freeze them in ice cube trays for really hot days. So you can see now I can pull on this, it's not breaking. When it moves through the water, it's gonna move like this. And it is absolutely deadly on fish. Falls apart, it's not gonna last. I don't really sell these on the website because they don't last long. I might go out with a dozen of these for a day and if they melt and fall apart, then I just cut it all off, and start the hook over again. That's my number one color and material for my purple worm. Let's go over some of the other materials. You might have seen these things, I don't like them. Too short, not enough action. You've seen these at the dollar store. These are pretty good, nice length. I do like a blue worm. My original source of the blue worm was this guy from Safeway. I saw this at Safeway one day and I said, I need to buy all of these. They're 35 cents each at the end of summer. And it only has it on top. And those are purple and blue. Kind of kind of reserve those for when I'm going out personal. I'm not sharing this with you. I've got two of them. The kids, of course, pop this one. So I only have this one left. It's like a giant zucchini thing. Purchase these at Safeway at the end of summer. Another cool one that we bought in Tennessee, if you remember that podcast, my kid had a fever. This is a little bit longer. These are going to melt. These are really good for larger bass worms. You want to use a little bit bigger hook. You could use, say, a Gamakatsu BS10 size 4 or 6 to tie one of these. These will last you a long time. I do sell these as individual legs on my eBay or Etsy page. Another really good one, a bit longer, a bit larger. This one was on the end of a glow stick that a kid had at the pool. I think I had to pay that kid a dollar. So if I want to tie these in a size 12 or 14, that is the perfect size. This may have been also from the dollar store. These I got recently. Make an awesome, a little bit more dense. This material is a little more dense, but it's got a great bubblegum pink to it. And I do sell these in my Etsy store to make your own wormies if you can't find these yourself. Now my two favorites, which you can no longer get, these were from the Del Rey Variety Store a couple years ago. These were called Fusilli Glow Balls. They're extremely dense. They don't melt as much, and these colors are awesome. You can see I ration these. If you can find these, they don't make them anymore that I'm aware of, Fusilli Glow Balls. You may find something else out there that looks similar. Use it, any kind of silicone toy. And that is how I'm gonna wrap up my little talk on worms. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. If you wanna buy some, Etsy, eBay. We're doing a trip to the post office tomorrow. I've got another shipment of fly orders going out to you. That is the Wacky Wild Worm story that I've got. That's it for Wednesday. I'll check back with you Thursday. I might have to do a Pat Eller's pattern. We'll have to repo. You want that? I'll give you some repo. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.